Hey everyone. In this video, I'm really going to build on a video I did a couple of weeks ago, and it was all about using PowerShell with Azure Functions. And what I wanna do in this video is answer some of the questions I actually had from that video. People ask, for example, well, how do I interact with Azure Storage? Um, how does that managed identity actually work? So what we're gonna do is take a bit more of an advanced scenario. Now, coincidentally, as part of a team exercise I'm on right now, we had a challenge, and it was to create a bingo um, kind of return call in 60 minutes or less using Azure. So the idea is you would have a list of the words or the numbers, and you use Azure so it would return one of the possible entries but it wouldn't return the same one again within that game. It would track what session. And so I decided, well, I'll use an Azure function with PowerShell again. So I create a storage account and the storage account is being used for two things. Firstly, there is the raw file that contains the actual words that I need to return one of. And in this case, if I actually jump over to VS Code super quickly, it's just a whole list of different Azure services. So it's gonna return one of those things. So I've taken that file and uploaded it into a container. Now, additionally, I have to track the state. I need to make sure I don't just return the same uh, entry again. So if I go again back into my storage account, I'm also gonna use, and I decided to use a table for that. There were different options but I've created this bingo state data table. And all I'm gonna do is store kind of the IP address of the person requesting it and the words that I've currently sent. And I'll have the option to kind of reset those. And we can see those entries with Storage Explorer. So we can see there's my bingo data file and there's my table, which is currently empty. Now to get started, I'll actually first just create the function locally. I'll use the local AZ PowerShell module. So I create this very simple function. I can pass a parameter to say reset the game. I have a little variable to track is everything going okay. And because I'm running it locally, I'm faking kind of a session ID. I'm just setting it to to infinity and beyond. <laughs> um, that will be replaced with the IP address when we actually run this as an Azure function that's gonna to respond to a HTTP request. Now, rather than hard coding, the resource group, the storage account, the table name, the blob container, and the blob data file, I'm gonna grab those as environment variables. And I've kind of got the values that I'm using on my local box commented out. Now, I'm gonna use a managed identity. I'm gonna give the Azure function a managed identity and make that a contributor of the storage account. Now today, Blob has a data RBAC, but Tables does not. So I'm just gonna make it a contributor. If you just interacted with Blob, well, rather than make it a contributor, you could give it some RBAC at the data fabric and not make it a general contributor of the account. But for what I'm doing, and again, I've got 60 minutes to create this, I just made it a contributor. So all I do is I go and get the storage account using get az storage account from the resource group and then the name. I now just get a context to that storage account using my current credential. In the function, it will be the managed identity. And then I actually go and get the table within that storage account. Now I'm using get az storage table so I'd actually need to import the AZ table module. So I have to make this available as part of my um, Azure function as well. And we'll cover that later on. So I've installed that module. Then I'm gonna read all of the records from the table that match my session ID. So again, in the cloud, this would be my requesting IP address. For right now, it's always gonna be that to infinity. I'm just really testing this out. And I do try catch with saying fails. I can set my status flag to false and set the body to be whatever the error was and the current point in my code. I then check is that reset game switch passed. 
If it is passed, well, I went and got all the records and stored them in this records variable. So I'll just pass those records to remove az table to delete them all. And I'll set my records tracker to null. And again, I've got that in a try catch. Now, remember, I went and fetched all those records, but all I really want out of that is the row key. The row key is gonna contain the actual word I've already responded with. And that'll make more sense when we run this a couple of times. So I just want to expand out the property row key and store that in all of the words I've currently sent. If there aren't any records, I'm just gonna send the pre-called to null. So essentially, just give me all the words I've already used for this session ID. Now I create a temporary file. I'm using a new GUID, so it would always be unique in case this is running multiple times. I'm getting the content of that big go data.txt file and storing it in $env temp. That's available in Azure Functions as well in that GUID named file. Then I'm just gonna get the content of that file, store it in a variable, and then delete the temporary file. Now, I need to return only words I've not already returned. So at this point, that bingo data would contain all of the possible words. And what we could do, we could actually see some of this. So we could actually run through some of these commands. So what we can do is let's actually run this first little block that does the try and actually goes and connects and gets the records from the table. So we can run that kind of interactively. No errors, just, hey, look, things are gonna change in the future, that's fine. I'm not passing the reset game, so I'm gonna ignore that. If there were any records, so did we actually get any data returned to us? We can look at the records variable. No, there aren't any. So I'm gonna ignore trying to fetch the pre-called. And now let's go and get the content out of the storage account. So we'll create the temp file, name, then we'll do this try catch to get the actual blob. So we've stored it into there. Then we'll fetch the content into our variable and then remove the temporary file. So if we look at our bingo source data, these are all the words from that blob. Again, I'm logged on as a user. It's using that for the context to connect to the storage account. This would not do anything right now because the pre-called is null. But what it would normally do is compare the object to that source data to the ones that have been called already and give me the differences, i.e. the ones that are not in both of these arrays. So just the words I've not used. Otherwise, if it's blank, we'll just set the bingo data to all of the source data. We work out how many there are. We write out how many are left, 50, because we've not run it yet. We're then gonna use PowerShell get random up to the maximum number of counts in the array. So the words there are, so it's picked one. We could go and see which one it picked. <laughs> number one. It's not very interesting. Let's run it again. We get a different number out. Now pick number 10. So now we pick number 10 from the array. That's gonna be our actual return data. And now what we're gonna do is add that item to our table. So if I execute this, let's actually just make sure I did actually create that dummy session ID value. So we'll run that super quick. Again, I'm kind of running this piecemeal so I can talk through what it's doing. So then it would go and add the entry into our table and then return the value. So now if we actually go and look at Azure Storage Explorer and refresh, so that's not actually done anything. So this is actually a new session. I've never actually used this. So if we actually looked at something super quickly, I'm not actually checking for any errors. Um, failure adding. 
Okay, I've not actually installed. Do you remember I talked about, well, I have to have this module. It's not part of the standard functionality. I guess on this machine, I never installed it. So I can super quickly create an elevated PowerShell session. And I will just do an install module AZ table. And that will then make it available on this machine. And I can kind of continue through. Now again, when I do this in Azure, I'll add that as one of the prerequisites. So let's go through that again. I don't need to manually import it. PowerShell will just find it now it's available. So we'll try and run this command one more time. It's actually taking a bit longer. Oh, there we go. You can see it actually did an entry this time. Refresh and there it is. So it's using my dummy to infinity and the row key is availability zone. So that's the entry it's returning. Now, what I can do to kind of show this working a bit better now. So this is a function. So what I'll do is I'll just select all of the code and execute it. So it's now defined that as a function. So now I can just do get bingo response. And I'll just run it. And so now it's returning PostgreSQL. If I run it again, it's now returning virtual machine. And we can see it's showing, hey, 48 items left. Then it was showing 49 items left because it's adding these entries into here. And then as part of that PowerShell code, remember that compare object is removing the ones that it's already done. So it's not gonna get them again. So I'm only getting in bingo data the words I've not currently used. Now, if I wanted to start again and get all of the words back, then I can just pass this reset game. So if I do dash reset game, and press enter, it says 50 items left. It would have deleted everything. I'll just have the one entry from the new request. So I can see that works locally. Great. So now what we need to do is actually get this stood up and running in Azure. So now we're in the Azure portal and I'm gonna create a new resource. So I need to create a function application. So we go in here, I'm gonna select my existing resource group I already created that contains that storage account I used previously. So there's my Azure Bingo functions. I'm gonna give it a name. In this case, it really doesn't matter what this is, but I'm just gonna use Savtech Azure Bingo. I'm using code. I want PowerShell Core. It's gonna be version six today. That will probably shift to seven pretty soon and my region's gonna be South Central US. For the hosting, remember I can run functions in sort of app service plans, other environments. Um, I have to have a storage account for some of the web job information. So I'm gonna again, just use my bingo data storage account I already created. I'm gonna use the Windows OS and I want it to be consumption, so it's serverless. I'm not integrating with anything else. I'll get a certain amount free. I need App Insights. That's gonna give me some of the troubleshooting capabilities. And then I'll go ahead and create it. So there's the review and off we go. So that's now complete. Now, before I actually start pasting in code, there's a few things I wanna set up for the actual environment. So the first thing is I want an identity. So I'm gonna turn on system assigned identity. That's gonna give me a managed identity that I could now use for role-based access control for other resources in Azure. So anything running in this function will just assume this identity. And in my case, I have that storage account. So I'm gonna jump up to the resource group that this is actually in, because it's the same resource group as my storage account. Then under access control, I'm gonna add a role assignment and that role assignment is going to be for contributor. Now remember, for blob, for queue, um, I can actually do data level fabric RBAC, but I can't for table. So I'm just gonna make it a contributor so we can actually go and get the access keys. I'm using a function app managed identity and I'm gonna use my bingo managed identity. So now that 
code running in the function will have access as contributor to this storage account. Now, a few other tweaks I want to make around kind of the app service plan. If I scroll down for a second, I can go ahead and actually look at the app files. And what I wanna do is turn on some logging. So as part of the host JSON file, I can add in a logging block just to give me some more information as I execute various things. The profile, I just wanna show you that, hey look, if there's an MSI, it automatically is gonna to connect to Azure as the identity. And then I need to add in here to also have that AZ table so I don't get the sort of same error I got locally. So I don't have to manually import the module or do anything else, it's just there. Now, if you remember, from my file, I used environment variables. Now, firstly, I'm gonna set a concurrency to five. So I could have five instances of this running at the same time. I probably am never gonna have more than one, but hey, I could support it. Now I'm creating those five environment variables for my resource group, my storage account, um, the table name, the blob container name, and the blob itself. So I'm just gonna go through and create these various values. You don't need to stay and watch those. So they're all done. Now that base configuration is done, I now want to actually go ahead and think about creating my actual function. So make sure I actually save this. And it's gonna take a second to actually save if I'm too quick. Yep, still saving. So now it's done. Now I can actually go off to functions and I wanna create a HTTP triggered function. So functions can have various triggers, could be a schedule. In my case, I want HTTP. And it's gonna give me some templates I can leverage to, to really get started. So I'm saying, hey, yeah, I want a HTTP trigger. I am gonna give it a name for this function. In my case, I'm just gonna say, hey, get bingo data. And we'll go ahead and create that function. It will now go and create that skeleton function for me. Now, the first thing I can actually do is, this is not just gonna be open. So for this particular function, I can create a per app key that might call this function. So I can add a new function key. I can say, for example, app one or whatever this could be. If I leave it blank for the value, it will auto generate. And now that's the key I can use from whatever I'm gonna to use to call this. To do that authentication, I know that key. So the HTTPS so no one can read it. And I'll be able to say, well, who is calling this? Now I can actually go in, it's created that framework for me. I could get the URLs with the key by selecting the right key, but I'm now ready to continue. What I'm gonna do is actually edit the code in VS Code. So I've taken that template it provides, the system.net, the parameter part, and essentially I've taken the existing code I had in my local file and kind of pasted it in. Now passing the parameter is a little bit different. Now I'm actually looking for a reset game from either the request or the body of the document. But then I have the same status good flag for the session ID, instead of having that to infinity, now I can look at the request, the headers, the X44, and I'm taking out the IP address, the first element. So that's actually gonna give me the requesting IP. I set all those environment variables, so I'm gonna read those in as before. I'm gonna to connect to the storage account. Everything is really gonna behave exactly the same for this function, I'm not changing anything. The only thing that's gonna be different is right at the end, if I had a problem, I'll return a bad request. If it's good, I'll return a HTTP status of okay. The body will be the return data, i.e. the value. And then I push that out. That's it. So I'm gonna take that code and I put it in to my function. Now I could just test this 
locally. As you can see here, I could, I've got no body elements. I could change what key I want to use. So I could say, hey, look, use my app one key and run. So it's going to connect through and try and trigger that. And what I should see is the same thing. If we go and look at our storage explorer, remember I blanked this out. What I should now see is for the partition key, I'll actually see my IP address. This is a VM running in Azure. So it's going to come from the Azure IP address space. And the row key will be the word it actually responds with. That's the first time it's run. But I can see, hey, look, get bingo entry function process to request. And what I should see is this switch to kind of that body. So Azure files is what it returned. OK, I can see bits of data that it actually responded with. So what I should see is Azure files in my table. And there's the source IP address. If I run it again, I should get a different word. So it's just going to keep going through now at Azure Synapse. And it's added that in as well. So it's tracking. So I'll never get the same word while I'm actually running this function from this same machine. Now, if I actually need to reset the game, well, in the body, I can just add reset game and I'm setting it to one. It doesn't matter what the value is in this case. So right now you can see I should have three values in there. I'm going to run it again. It's going to start a new game. And what it will do is, so it now returned B to B, but all the entries should have gone except for my new entry. And that's it. That's the entire thing. Now to really complete this, I don't want to run it from the kind of test harness up in Azure. So what I'm going to do is a super, super simple. I'm taking the key from the portal that again, remember, I can get the function URL. I say the key I want and then copy. So I've taken that value and pasted it over here. Define that as my URI value. I'm gonna create a body object and a body JSON to reset the game if I need to reset. But ordinarily, I won't use that. Now I'm gonna start a new game. So I'm gonna say, hey, I'm gonna paste that body in so it will make it do a reset. So I'm invoking that method, I'm passing it a reset game and it gave me Cosmos DB. But now for subsequent calls, I won't have a body in there. I want to get a new word. I can just keep running it. And it's giving me those entries. And what I should see is it's populating. There we go. And again, if I, hey, I'm someone's one, they got their bingo. I can say, hey, pass the body again with that reset game. And I'm done. And I did do this. It was about 55 minutes this took me. So I came in just <laughs> under the challenge time. As you can see, it's very messy code wise, but it uh, does the job. It tracks it by session. And hopefully this just gives you an idea that there's really nothing special about interacting with the storage. I didn't change any of the code to interact with blob or table. And that would really apply to everything. If I was using Cosmos or SQL, if I can interact with it using PowerShell ordinarily, using, for example, it could be my account, it could be a managed identity. It could be a service principle via a certificate or a secret. It really doesn't matter. The PowerShell is not going to change just because I'm now running it inside an Azure function. So it's really easy to use this. And remember, we get a certain amount of Azure function free anyway. So this really isn't costing me any money other than storing that tiny little blob file and those few entries in the table. So I hope this helped explain things a little bit. We saw a few little cool bits of PowerShell, especially kind of the expand properties to just get the road keys and those compare objects. If you actually wanted to see the files for this, I have it in my random stuff repo. And if you go to the Azure Bingo PowerShell function, I have kind of that local version. I have my sample data file. I have the run, which is the Azure function version. And uh, there you go. Till next time, take care.